Okay, since Warframe's involved, we gotta do the obligatory disclaimer. This isn't a uh, top reasons why Destiny is a better game, or why Warframe sucks and Destiny is better. There's just a few things that I've noticed from playing Destiny that I think could really benefit Warframe as a game as a whole. So, yeah, don't get triggered, please. Anyways, let's get started. Number one, difficulty. From what I've seen, Destiny has a pretty damn good grasp on how to actually properly scale difficulty in normal missions and free roam. Now, before I get too deep into this, I want to point out that I've only been playing Destiny since it came out on Steam. So, a little over three weeks now. Thus, my gear isn't exactly min-maxed yet, but I'm in a pretty good spot to where I can dish out a lot of damage and stay alive. Anyways, Destiny knows how to give players a power fantasy without completely sacrificing difficulty. Like Warframe, Destiny gives you four specific powers. In this case, a utility, a grenade, a melee, and a super. But unlike Warframe, you can't just use it over and over and over again until you run out of energy. Destiny requires that you actually choose what you feel are proper moments to use your abilities, because they have a pretty lengthy cooldown. Now, right off the bat, let me say that I'm not saying Warframe needs to add cooldowns to their abilities that would just destroy the game's high-paced fluidity. But in Destiny, you need to constantly decide things like, do you want to use a grenade to clear a room full of trash mobs, or chunk down a boss's health bar? But don't get the wrong idea, that doesn't mean that the game is always a freaking chess match. Oftentimes, missions will often start off with like a free roam type of thing where mobs start off with really low health that you can just kind of quickly burst down and shoot down with a couple bullets or not. But as you kind of go on, like doing faction missions or something, it'll start to get gradually harder as you go through it. It's only until you do a continual fight like a faction war, picking certain difficulties in raids and strike missions that you'll actually encounter enemies that actually hit like a truck. It's nice that certain missions actually let you choose a difficulty because then you can pick something that's really easy to complete bounties and such, or something that's really freaking hard to actually get good gear. Now I know that the Warframe crowd generally prefers not to actually have to put skill or effort towards the game because it hurts their power fantasy, but I appreciate that Destiny at least gives me the option to have a hard time or not. But alright, enough with that. Number 2. Random but Scaling Rewards Destiny is a game that uses a gear level system. Kind of like you see in Division, Final Fantasy XIV, and Borderlands 3. Basically, the better the gear level, known Destiny as Light Level, the better the stats and overall benefits. Now, I kind of already threw this idea at the Warframe community before, and of course they all collectively hated it, but really hear me out here. Give weapons a slight RNG stat roll. Only slight, as in, for example, we all know the Dread Bow, right? The highest slash and crit damage bow in the game. In this system I'm thinking of, no matter what, it will always have a high slash damage and crit chance. For simplicity's sake, everything scales from 1 to 10. In a random stat system like Destiny's, guns always have a minimum bear stat, regardless of the roll they get. In this case, the example would be the Dread always has at least 7 slash and 7 crit chance. But, draw speed, accuracy, and reload speed can range anywhere from 5 to 9. So basically, you can always shoot for that god roll, like having 9 slash 8 crit chance and probably 10 draw speed, with the drawbacks for balance being like 2 reload speed and 6 accuracy. And that's just one example for one weapon with one possibility of random stat rolls. This kind of system can apply to all kinds of weapons and gear, especially prime gear, and it would add so much replayability to the game. You'd finally have something to do with those hundreds and hundreds of dread and weapon blueprints that you have instead of just selling them for credits. You can roll, you can basically roll weapons over and over again until you finally get the stats that best match your playstyle and preference. I also honestly think it would be a great replacement for Rivens because then more people would be selling prime parts instead of just flooding chat with Rivens, and thus give value back to prime equipment and probably rebalancing the overall market. Now again, I'm talking purely hypotheticals here, DE would need to completely revisit the entire way loot and relics are farmed and handled, but I 100% believe that this could bring so many players old and new to the game. Warframe needs to give players something other than collecting stuff as a goal, and I'd put all my non-existent money on that kind of system being really successful if they just gave it a try. But that's enough with that one. Number 3. Using every map set. Warframe players, we all know the infamous Hydron Bonfire, Moth Survival, and the in and out node for resource farm. There are 144 plus map nodes in Warframe, and the majority of the entire player base only ever go to Hydron, Unsedna, or Mont in the Void. For good reason, mind you. Hydron has the best mid to high level enemy spawn rates, which, which make it really freaking good for leveling gear and weapons. Mont is where you would go to test out builds and or farm Argon Crystals. 
but that's really about it. Now, it can be argued that the relics kind of fixed this map stagnation, but honestly, if they didn't force players to go to different maps and different mission types, people would just go to the Hydron Bonfire just to crack relics and level warframes. Two birds of one stone. Destiny does a really good job at pushing players to go to different places at least once in a while, because various NPCs will have daily and weekly challenges and bounties that give you really good scaled rewards. Even would-be early areas like Earth still have purpose like forging weapons and completing quests and such. I think the best way Warframe can implement something like this would be to do what a lot of players have been begging for and that's to basically add difficulty options to every world. For example, I like Earth. I like Earth's tile set. It's nice, it's pretty, it's cool, it's dynamic, but I never have a reason to go to it because the enemies are only ever level 1 through 20, which in Warframe is nothing. Add selective difficulty options and then boom. Harder enemies equal better XP, which equals better rewards, and boom, everyone's going to different places this time. I think it would just be a really good way to spread out the community away from the Hydron Bonfire is all. But you all get the point. Number 4. Raids. Do I really need to go into this? Because this is the second biggest dead horse next to Warframe's content droughts. Everyone who's anyone that's played Warframe knows that this game desperately needs raids back. Long story short, Destiny has raids, Warframe doesn't. Railjack's looking pretty fun, I'm looking forward to continuing the story, but Jesus Christ, we need some kind of endgame content like raids. And even if we do get raids back again, we need them to be rewarding to actually be worth running. Destiny's raids are super challenging, require a lot of teamwork and effort, but they give the best rewards and some really damn good gear to min-max yourself to do even bigger and harder raids, to get even bigger and harder gear. But that's enough of that, like I said, this is a really dead horse topic to most Warframe players. Last but not least, PvP. Now, one of the biggest memes in the Warframe community is telling people who are bored to go play Conclave or Lunaro. Warframe's PvP isn't a dead horse, it's kind of like that little miniature pony your daughter wanted but then got bored of when she grew up. Now, a lot of Warframe's PvP problems are subjective. The most common problems you hear about is that it's unplayable due to the naturally high, crazy, spastic move system, which is true, trying to shoot other players can be like trying to shoot a fly with a BB gun. People are saying it's unbalanced, which I can't really chime in about since I don't really play too much PvP to really get a fair note about how good or bad weapons are. And overall, it's just not very fun. Which of course is super subjective, but I mean, hell, look at the numbers. It's really take or leave. I for one really enjoy Lunaro. Stop laughing. Whenever I can actually find a person who doesn't just quit after I get two goals on them, it can be a pretty fun game mode. But I have a theory. The biggest reason why no one does PvP in Warframe is simply because there's just no reason to. What is there to gain from PvP in Warframe? Literally next to nothing. I think there's an armor set and a sigil that you can get, but really, who's going to be bothered enough to go through those things? Once again, this is something that can be remedied by just adding simply meaningful rewards. Destiny pulled a rare switch for me. I, for one, hate first-person shooter PvP with a burning passion. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Titanfall 1, those were probably the only first-person shooter games that I didn't immediately hate the PvP of. I basically wrote off the genre completely. When I heard that a lot of Destiny's weapons and armor is locked behind PvP, I'll admit, I kinda died a little bit inside. But then the Iron Banner came out. And me still being the kind of new player that I am, I desperately need armor that isn't from a world drop. Also, I really wanted that body piece for my warlock. So I decided to go for the armor, at least the video footage, and at least give it a shot. Lo and behold, I actually really, really enjoyed Destiny's PvP. Sure, getting constantly shoulder checked by titans and getting sniped by hand cannons can get kind of annoying. But I mean, you just gotta fight fire with fire. You gotta learn the counters, learn how to check corners, learn how to aim for one thing, and I don't know, all of it just kind of clicked for me. Not only did I get the Iron Banner armor that I wanted, I got various guns and weapons and gears that were leagues better than what I had before. And even after I got all the new armor and the new guns, I still kept going back for more because it was just simply fun. I was constantly being rewarded for getting good. My light level must have went up at least 30 points by the first night I was playing it. And now that I know that I like the PvP in the game, I have even more stuff to do in the game now. And you know what, even if I didn't like the PvP, at least the game rewarded me for at least trying it. 
So regardless if you like PvP or not, there's at least an incentive to at least give it a shot. In conclusion, a lot of what Destiny can teach Warframe is simply based on reward factor. Warframe is a damn fun game, but it just doesn't give players enough to actually work towards that isn't some kind of farming material or some kind of time-gated blueprint that you're not going to be sure if you can get it or not. Warframe can easily spread out its player base away from the Hydron bonfire, it just simply needs to give them a reason to go to other places and do other things. Even though it was part of the cause for the death of raids, it shows that players go to where the rewards are, hence why Eidolon hunting is one of the biggest activities in the game, even though a large chunk of the player base actually kinda hate doing them. Simply put, give players a prize at the end of the obstacle course and maybe they'll be more incentivized to actually run it. Anywho, those are my points, I think I made them, take care or leave it. Again, these are just things from Destiny that I think DE should really consider trying with Warframe. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff from Warframe that Destiny can learn, I might do a separate video on that later. But anyways, that's it for this video. Tell me what you guys think of the new sprites, I figured they would actually help better visually convey reaction and emotions since my voice is so dead and monotone. I got a couple more in the process of being made, so there'll be more than just the four that you've seen here. They're all made by the awesome artist Paper Flesh. I'm sure a lot of you from Jesus community are familiar with her. Check out her Instagram at paperflesh underscore art, where she posts a lot of her inks and sketches of her works and updates when she's available for commissions. I also want to give another huge proper shout out to Small Tour for making the new channel banner, and the old one if you didn't know. He's been helping out me and the channel since it was in its infamacy, and honestly, I can't owe him enough anymore at this point. He's honestly a good friend of mine now at this point, and I'm glad I can actually count on him for stuff. And I hope he knows that he can count on me for things if he ever needs it. So, be sure to check out his Discord where you can keep up with his projects and mess with this bot Prometheus. Seriously, you can have a full conversation with that thing, it's hilarious. And, of course, special thanks to my patrons, especially the ones on screen. I appreciate that the majority of you guys stuck around it even after I said YouTube isn't going to be my main primary life goal anymore. It's thanks to you guys that I'm able to afford games like Destiny's DLCs and future games. The Patreon was redesigned with new descriptions and goals, so be sure to check it out when you get the time. Anyways, that's all for this video. As always, I'm the Reaper Hunter, and I'll see you all next time.